about two months ago, my best friend and I made plans to hang out. She's been my best friend for more than 10 years. I'm a year older, and she used to break down in crowded places and was bullied when we were in school together, so I am fiercely protective of her. Seriously, you fuck with this girl, you fuck with me. The state we live in has a high rate of human trafficking, which makes me even more vigilant and particularly sensitive to this event. Our favorite mall is a great place to hang out on weekdays, as it's not too particularly crowded. That's the way we like it. There's so much to do there that when we go, we usually pick a movie time and spend the time before it shopping, snacking, and exploring. We were there all day, and she was pretty aloof that day. I, however, felt on edge and unfriendly. I'm usually not like that, but chalked it up to just being a bit cranky after getting rained on. My mom has drilled it into me to always be aware of my surroundings, and I've always been good at remembering names and faces. So when we saw people in the mall more than once, I usually remembered when I saw them, how many times I saw them, and where. Bestie and I stopped at one of those shops to get smoothies and sat down at a table to take a rest. It's a big mall, and we were walking all day, so I welcomed the rest. While we were in line, I saw a man cut through the shop and walk behind us. The shop was a corner shop with open entryways, so when I say cut through, he walked between us and a pillar. There was that on-edge feeling again. I became tense and immediately checked to make sure I hadn't been pickpocketed. I had all my stuff, so I tried to relax, and we were waiting for our drinks to be made, and I saw the man walk by us again, this time slower and around the pillar. There was nothing particularly scary about him. I mean, average height, build, kind of a dad bod, jeans, dark button-up, short haircut, but I immediately just wanted him to go away. I told Bestie that I would grab us a table. I sat where she and I could see one another while she waited for our drinks, and I kept my eyes on her in case he came back. While she was getting our drinks, I saw the guy come back, this time not alone. He was with two other men. They all seemed similar in age, all wearing jeans, one in a denim jacket and hat, the other in a white shirt with a gold chain on his neck, and the cologne they wore was overwhelming. They kind of made me think of middle-aged men who go to clubs to hit on girls. However, my internal voice was screaming, these guys are fucking pimps. Bestie joined me at the table, and we immediately started on our drinks and cookies we bought at our favorite cookie shop. I relaxed a moment, and while I was happily munching away, guess who comes around the corner again? I wait until they pass, and then lean in and tell Bestie what's going on. Me. Don't be alarmed, but those guys keep walking by us. Bestie. What guys? As she's asking, they come around the corner again. Me, whispering, Them! We both remain quiet until they pass. Now that we're together, they slow down when passing our table. This makes me think that either she's their intended target, or they just think now that we're together, we'll be distracted. I try not to alarm her, but I've seen these guys hanging around other stores we've been in that day. She watches them go and is quiet for a moment. Bestie, don't overthink it, Loopy. Maybe they're just mall walkers. Me? (sighs) Maybe? She tries to cheer me up by talking about the movie we plan to see, and how she's happy we can get into a dine-in theater. I know this is her way of trying to protect me by distracting me, but while she's double-checking showtimes, all I can think of is how my mom told me to use an umbrella as a weapon. I tried to smile and brush things off for both our sakes, but while she's checking showtimes, guess who comes back around the corner? She's nose deep in her phone, so I turn my upper body towards them, scowling and making sure I look each of them in the eye as they walk by. I had my phone in my hands and got the sudden idea to hold it up like I was taking pictures or video. The guys sped up a bit, and White Shirt looked back at me as they went by. I watched until they were out of sight, and we didn't see them again for the rest of the night. The mood improved, we had fun, but I broke down about it to my mom later. 
She assured me that I did the best I could in that situation. But that night, we came up with a danger code in case I was ever snatched from somewhere. So, creepy mall walkers who I'm not convinced were just mall walkers? Let's not meet. And if you touch my best friend, you'll have to kill me before I kill you. I've never wanted to talk to anyone about this, because I'm sure we'll see in the comments a lot of people won't believe me. I'll be honest, it sounds like a fucking creepypasta, so I've had no desire. Recently, though, I felt comfortable enough to tell my partner, reluctantly anyways. I want to go ahead and put on record I'm really skeptical of anything paranormal or supernatural. I generally find the topic kind of cringy and corny. But I saw something as a kid. I was fortunate enough that I only saw it once. It's a memory that I try to keep out, but despite my efforts, I think about it every day. When I was about 11, I went swimming at a friend's house. It was in the summer, and at the time I lived in a pretty rural podunk town an hour or two out of the Smoky Mountains. I grew up only having a few close friends. My parents were very traditionally raised by Eastern European immigrants, so they were more strict on me in turn. I didn't particularly like the girl they were making me play with, but they knew her parents, so she was the only one I was ever allowed to hang out with. And though she got me in trouble constantly, and had a fibbing issue, she had grown on me, and we loved each other as cousins would. Their house was pretty nice. It was a farmhouse that sat in the middle of probably close to 30 acres. It was surrounded by cow pastures and mostly empty fields but the acre or two surrounding their house was kind of densely wooded. Sometimes we would play in the woods, but I'd get a really scary feeling that someone was watching us. She would agree, and we'd ride her four-wheeler home. It's hard to tell whether she actually felt that way or not because of her problem with lying. Her family had a big pool, which is where we would spend our summer. And on this day, we were getting along pretty well, and I did my best to have good fun, as children do. I remember this moment distinctly. We were playing a game of sorts where we would take turns making a whirlpool for the other person to float in. Whoever made the fastest one was rewarded, and I don't remember how. It had to be my turn to make a whirlpool, and my cousin was behind me in a floaty as I swam laps around the pool to make the whirlpool faster. I was swimming underwater, thinking it would work better to make the water flow faster. That's when I saw it. Or him. I lifted my head out of the water for a second. And he was standing there, at least five feet from the pool's ledge on the opposite side of the pool from me. It was not a person, or not like anyone I'd ever seen. I remember feeling myself becoming very dreadful and audibly gasping and flinching away not being able to make any other noise or sound. This man was watching me. Please bear with me, because this is going to sound fucking ridiculous. In the split second I saw him, this is the description I got of him. He was skinny, but not skinnier than humanly possible. Probably 5'8". I could tell he was a grown man. Gray skin, no face, two hollow black eyes that took up most of his face. Not long eyes, though. They were round. That was the only definition I could see on him. The depth of his eyes and how sunken in they were. Dark, very clean-cut hair. White clothing. He had his hand up and was waving at me very calmly. The moment I turned my head, he was gone. I remember darting my head around back where he was, but nothing, and I reluctantly told my cousin I thought I saw something. She told me I was just trying to scare, and I wasn't. She threatened to tell her mom if I did it again, so I never spoke of it again. I always thought that with age I would wisen up and figure out what the fuck that was. <laughs> I haven't. In fact, this was 12 years ago. It scares me now more than it did then. This isn't what people say of ghosts. Aren't they supposed to be grotesque and have long hair and inhumanely long limbs? A few years back, I mustered up the courage to spend a while googling what I saw, to find similar stories or something. It was grim. 
it took me to a lot of accounts of children seeing what I saw, and as adults they were trying to make sense of it, as I am. It was somehow linked to that black-eyed children urban legend, which I never thought could ever be true. <laughs> that had to be a crock of shit. It's completely unverifiable, but I know what I saw. All I have is this, detailing my account after all these years. I lived in Seattle for a few years when I was a teenager. My dad moved us to Seattle after his brother died in a car accident. My uncle left behind his widow, six kids, and his business that consisted of a tavern. His widow needed help running the business, so my dad agreed to go manage it for her. The tavern was a family-run business. My father managed it, and other family members worked it as bartenders, waiters, cleaning crew, etc. The tavern was open until 1.30 in the morning, seven days a week. and My dad was there almost every night. The tavern was very popular in the Latino community, and on the weekends it had live music, so there was a cover charge to get in. One particular weekend, my dad decided to come home early. He was just so exhausted. He called in a night and came home around 11. Around 1 in the morning, I woke up for no apparent reason. Maybe two minutes later, the phone started ringing. This was a time before cell phones, so one of the two phones was always in my room. I remember sitting up and reaching for the phone that was on my nightstand when I told myself, I don't want to be the one told Ricky's dead. Ricky was my 23-year-old cousin that worked as security in the tavern. The phone rang for a while, and my parents never used to pick up the phone because 9 out of 10 times it was for me. My dad finally got tired of hearing it ring, so he went to the living room to answer. A few seconds later, I heard my dad yelling on the phone. He seemed very angry at someone, and I obviously couldn't hear the person on the other side, but I was thinking, Dad's angry because they killed Ricky, and he wasn't there to help him. I knew he had been shot in the back by a drunk customer, and I just knew that he was dead. Ricky had been called to the door because there was a customer that was upset he wasn't allowed in. Ricky explained to him that he had already had too much to drink and to come back another time. The guy did leave, but he came back an hour later with a gun and he shot my cousin four times in the back. I never told anyone that I knew Ricky was dead before my dad even picked up the phone. It's a very sensitive subject in my family and I certainly wouldn't bring it up now. I remember my aunt, Ricky's mom, was told that he died instantly, and somehow I knew that that wasn't true. I had a feeling that he knew what was happening and was really scared. I've kept this to myself for many years, and I've always wondered how and why I knew this. In another instance, when my mother lived in her house in Mexico, she was good friends with one of her neighbors. The neighbor was a single mom with twin daughters and one son. The kids were really nice and always ran errands for my mom and constantly checked up on her. I remember that over the years when I would visit my mother, which was almost every weekend, I would sometimes see those kids running around the neighborhood and they would always greet us with a smile and wave. One weekend, before heading to my mom's house, I stopped at a local casino and was playing the slots when I looked up and I saw the neighbor's son looking at me. So I smiled at him and instead of smiling back, he quickly looked away. I thought it was weird because he was always so friendly. And then I thought, maybe he wasn't supposed to be there. I mean, the legal gambling age in Mexico is 18, and he looked like he wasn't a day older. After a few minutes, I looked up again, and this time he was sitting by a slot machine. I remember he was sitting sideways and spinning his little chair a little. I noticed he didn't seem to be playing, and I thought maybe he was waiting on someone. He seemed to be looking out into the rows of the machines. I forgot about him for a while, and when I remembered, I looked up, and he was gone. I just thought it was weird he didn't greet me, even though it seemed like he recognized me. That night, after a little bit of gambling, I headed over to my mom's house to spend the rest of the weekend. After talking to my mom for a while that night, she told me that she had gone to a funeral two days before. 
the neighbor's son had been killed. He was having lunch with friends, and two gunmen went into the restaurant and started shooting. The neighbor's son got shot in the head and died instantly. I told my mom that that was impossible. I had just seen him a few hours ago. It was not someone that looked like him. I mean, it was him. I was planning on telling my mom I saw him that night, but she beat me to it and told me that he had died the week before. I don't know why I saw him. I mean, we weren't close, and he also didn't seem to want me to relay any kind of message. He was just, well, just there. My last instance. About ten years ago, I was having a meeting with my supervisor, and she excused herself to take a personal phone call. She seemed to be arguing with someone and told the person that they could talk later. She apologized for the interruption and explained to me that her mom was giving her drama about feeling sick and had driven herself to the hospital. She said that her mom would often tell her that she was sick, but the doctors would always tell her it was just to get attention. It always turned out that she was fine. During the rest of our meeting, I could not get the feeling that her mom really wasn't okay out of my head. I told myself to stop because I said to myself, look, her mom's going to die. I had never met her mom, but something told me that my supervisor was going to be sorry she didn't accompany her mom to the hospital that day. After our meeting, I went out to lunch, and when I got back, I was told that my supervisor had a family emergency, and she had to leave, and they didn't think she was coming back. That's when I knew for sure. I mean, I was 100% positive that her mom had passed away. As you've already guessed, her mom died that day in the hospital. It was shocking to her family because the lady was only 60 years old, and she was told she was very healthy. All the time she made drama over being sick, it was for unrelated symptoms, a headache, stomachache, back pain, etc. My supervisor took her mom's death especially hard because she felt guilty for not believing that she was sick and then letting her drive herself to the hospital. I knew her mom was not mad at her and didn't want her to feel guilty. Her mom felt bad that she had fought with her that last time they spoke. Of course, I never told her this because I have no way of knowing. I just do. Please don't think that I'm crazy or making any of this up. I know this story is really out there, and that's why I've never told anyone about this. But I am hoping that there are other people out there that have had something like this happen to them.